Welcome back to Pokemon Rejuvenation. Hope everybody is staying happy, healthy, and safe. On the last part, we finished up the Ecclesia Pyramid storyline, and our friends chose to head back to Grand Dream City. Which is now open, by the way, so if you want to head back to Grand Dream City and get anything that you might have missed, feel free to do so. Despite that, we chose to stick around, and we did some side questing in Zone Zero. So on this part, we're going to continue that trend to side questing, and we're going to start here in the Aquamarine Cave and the surrounding areas. So if you don't remember where this is, this is on Route 6, which is near Tellier Resort or Gakori Village. And we're going to start side questing in this room over here called the Aquamarine Chamber. We want to make our way all the way back over here towards this dive spot. And this is where we begin. Also, you might notice that my Crawdon is using Dive. I did indeed go back to Grand Dream City and I grabbed the HM for Dive. You can grab it from the Axis High University. There is the High Striker challenge there. It's like a 2% challenge, so basically I just saved in front of it and soft reset until I got it. You don't need it to use Dive, however, it is very helpful in some battles coming up. Anyways, on to this labyrinth of currents. So I have a map that I'm going to be using to get through it, I'll have it linked in the description. But for now, you're going to notice these panels that will change colors from orange to purple. We want to make our way around this area and basically go over each of those panels. So starting off, we're going to be heading down south. I can actually let my repel go here. And eventually we'll make our way over to this spot and we'll be able to hit that panel right there. We're going to now head up north and we want to head up over to this spot and hit that panel right there. And finally, we want to head over here. You want to make sure that you're on the far right side. And we're going to hit this panel right down here. So the bad news is, unfortunately, in order to get back to the exit, we actually have to loop around the entire system of currents all over again, which is a little bit annoying, unfortunately but it could be worse. So once you reach the spot, you actually want to just go forward from the middle panel and it will take you all over, all the way back to the beginning. So we're just going to surface right there and we're going to keep that area in mind for a little bit. Next up, we actually need to head to the spot where Amber as so I was saying, we actually need to head over to the spot where Amber fell in through the floor. So that's going to be right over here. So we're going to be jumping into that hole right there, and then we're going to make our way to the left, and there is a bit of a dive spot right here. You want to make sure to kind of dive right here on the lowest section of the tiles. I don't think it matters if you dive one set up, because you can just move down here. But we're going to be finding ourselves in the same labyrinth. However, this time because we are on the lowest section, we can actually bump into this rock when the currents drag us and we can head somewhere different, somewhere new. So if we take these currents, we should wind up out here. So out here we'll actually find the water memory and we'll also find this mysterious panel and we need the enigmatic key to actually activate the panel. So this is why we're only just covering this spot now, even though we could have potentially been diving down here later. We're now going to swim off to the side, and if we make our way down here, we'll find someone very, very interesting. So this someone has nothing to do with the maze. She's kind of her own person. This is going to be Challenger Neptune, who we are about to battle, but before that, I'm going to show off my team and what we're going to be doing here. So I have Crawdon here. Crawdon now has Dive over Crabhammer. The only reason it has Dive is mainly for the purpose of changing the underwater 
scenery and battles. Everyone else is pretty much the same. I have Raichu here. Raichu could help out, potentially. I don't think it'll need to really help out. I also have my Alola Tails right over here. I changed one move on it, which... I forgot what it was. I think it was Icy Wind. I changed that to Freeze Dry over at the Move Relearner in Sheerden Village. It, it's about time, honestly. That's really going to help out on certain Pokemon. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and do a safety save, and we're going to talk to Miss Neptune. How dare you interrupt my training? I've been underwater for approximately 45 days. The process was only possible through the sheer strength of my Pokemon. And what of you? What brings you to the depths of this vast trench? <laughs> I see. You were sent by the government to kill me. Again? I, Neptune, second member of the Culver Clan, will destroy you here and now. Yes, she has absolutely no chill. So this is going to be a battle on the underwater field, and you might want to get used to it because we have another battle like this coming up. She's going to start off with her Alolan Raichu. So this thing is Life Orb, it has Discharge, Surf, Focus Blast, and Psychic as well as Surge Surfer. So something interesting to note about Surge Surfer is that it actually is active underwater, as well as above water. However, the bad thing about underwater is that Alolan Raichu isn't immune to the quadruple speed drop underwater for not being a water type. I don't know why, but I don't think they included Surge Surfer in the immunities for that. So its speed is only halved, unlike other non-water type Pokemon, so it's really, really weird. Anyways, this is a adaptability, max EV to attack Crawdon tier, and I'm just going to Aqua Jet, and we're going to knock it out. Alolan Raichu is just really frail in general. Next up is going to be Delmize. Alright, so Delmize has the Assault Vest, it has Anchor Shot, Power Whip, Whirlpool, and Earthquake. Also has Steel Worker for an ability. Steel Worker ensures that Delmize can do full damage underwater with its physical attacks, because otherwise, physical attackers that are not water types underwater only do half damage. So I'm going to go for the dive, and I'm going to bring this battle to the surface. And the Delmize is hopefully going to knock out Crawdon here. So that is perfectly fine. Also, did you see that damage? That was resisted damage. Crawdon is a beast. Anyways, up here on the surface, I'm going to send out my Lola Tails and we're going to hit the field with a Blizzard. It's going to take out the Delmize and we're going to freeze everything over. Next up is going to be Samurott and I'm going to send out Amoongus on this. So it's got the Elemental Seed, and on this field, it's going to boost its speed, actually. So the Samurott has Waterfall, Megahorn, Sacred Sword, and Sword Stance, Torn for an ability. I'm just going to go for the Clear Smog, because it's probably going to try to set up. So I don't want that to happen. I'm going to take a bit of damage from the Hail, and I'm going to start Giga Draining. I actually like Amoongus a lot for this. I mean, you can tell we caught this thing a really, really long time ago, and we're still using it. It just completely walls the Samurai and many other Pokemon. So we are going to knock out that Samurai. And next up is going to be Wishcast. Wishcast? I think that's how you say it. So this Wishcast has the Wishcast Crest, it has Waterfall, Dragon Dance, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. It also has Hydration for an ability. So the Wishcast Crest basically means that it gets attack boost if it switches in on Grass-type attacks. I am just going to hit this with a Freeze Dry. In between the field and the fact that this is four times effective, it's gone. Next up is going to be Blastoise. So I think I'll send out Kukunuku right here. 
I'm pretty sure I could stall out this Blastoise with Pukumuku if I really, really wanted to. But anyways, Blastoise has the Toys I Knight. It has Torn Fern ability normally, but that turns into Mega Launcher when it Mega Evolves. It has Waterfall, Whirlpool, Ice Beam, and Aurora Spear. So I think... I think I might just Memento. I know I could stall this out with Toxic, but I also just want to make the next Pokemon that comes in a little bit easier. So I think I'm going to Memento with Pikamuku right here. I'll send out Spiritomb. We can take a hit now, and I'll go for the Memento as well. Unless I get frozen, which I don't, thankfully. I really don't have to do this, but the next Pokemon that comes out is really, really bulky, so it helps to heal the setup on it and take it out really quickly. So I'll send out Raichu here. We're going to take the Ice Beam. We should take it pretty well. And I'm going to get two Nasty Plots up. And then we are going to destroy this Blastoise. And that leaves Cray Dilly. So Cray Dilly here has the leftovers. It has Giga Drain, Grind, Toxic, and Recover. Storm Drain for an ability. This is basically her go-to Pokemon if you try to play the underwater field like her with something that has Swiss Swim and just knock her out, sweep her that way. I'm just going to hit this with a Psychic, and that should be a two-hit KO. And it will knock out Raichu, but I can just send in a little Nine Tails and knock this out as well. Cradilly is really, really bulky, and if I didn't set up those nasty plots, it would have taken forever to knock that out. Wait a minute. You're not an assassin. Truly. Well then. In that case, please take this as a token of my defeat. They say when all five shards are brought together, something mysterious will happen. Do you think you'll ever be able to figure it out? Hmm. Only time will tell. One last thing. Please also take this. I must return to the surface now. My stamina has run out. Farewell. So that's actually pretty neat. We'll get Pop Leo from that as well as another department store sticker. I think at this part, at this point, we might actually be able to reach the level of the department store that sells the X items, which is really broken. Anyways, we also want to head down here and into this corner. We'll actually find the Blastoise I Knight for ourselves. I really have no idea how to say that. Anyways, we also want to head over here and we want to dive right up here. and. We then want to dive right down over here. So because we actually interacted with that pillar earlier, we opened this area here. So inside of this area, we're actually going to find a couple of few really neat items. We're going to find the Zangoose Crest. Actually a really neat item because it allows Zangoose to run I think it's Toxic Boost for an ability, which basically gives it Guts Boost, but the Crest will also heal it through its poison as if it has Poison Heal. Over here we're actually going to find the Ariados Crest. So the Ariados Crest ups Ariados' speed by 50%. It also gives it guaranteed crits against Pokemon that are either slowed or poisoned. So that's actually pretty neat. There's also some lore here. You might notice some of these bookcases are green and we can actually read them. Also something I want to point out, that was the Ariados Crest. Ariados starts with an A. That was the Zangoose Crest over there. Zangoose starts with a Z. No idea if that's intentional or not, but it gives me Alpha and Omega vibes. Anyways, we're going to start reading some of these bookcases here. There's a 
series of text here. One title reads, The Core, Project Interceptor. Long have humanity fought the ties of destiny itself. Some don't even believe in its existence, but everything happens for a reason. Is this the act of God? Perhaps the act of the universe itself? The world is similar to that of programming. It's commanded to follow a set of commands and instructions. But what if we were able to intercept these commands? Rewrite what was already written? What if someone not from this world would appear? What set of instructions would the system give to deal with such a predicament? Is it capable of dealing with such an extraneous variable? That's why we've created the core. A series of pillars and conduits that rest beneath the Earth's surface. When the core senses a presence outside of this world's, the pillars will unearth themselves. This will... The rest of the text appears to be missing. There's also a green bookcase down here. This time, the title reads, Interceptor's Limits. Although the Interceptor acts as an exception to the core's design, it is not omnipotent. It can only travel through the universe where the core exists. If the Interceptor were to stray too far from the planet, they would lose consciousness. Therefore, they are not fit to undergo the project based at Ecclesia Pyramid. If the Interceptor were to perish, the core would take damage. In the event that the core is too heavily damaged, the Interceptor shall cease to exist. Please note to any Interceptor subjects, we do not live outside the realm of mortality. Fail too many times, and that will be the end. That's pretty dark. Anyways, we should find more green bookcases over here. This one is titled Legendary Bond. Human immortality is something we've discussed and even attempted at many times before. Why do creatures known as Pokemon live far longer lives than humans? It seems, as previously theorized, that Pokemon and humans share a common ancestor. Using the archetype's power, we were able to unleash the hidden potential of certain subjects. We are able to awaken a gene inside of a human that brings forth their primitive instincts and form. The result of this, subjects have turned into Pokemon themselves, and not regular beings either. Beings that have dominance over time, space, and antimatter. No further testing has been done at this point. And finally, the last text is called The Archetype's Influence. Today the archetype was brought into the lab. While it's still in its prototype stage, we're confident that this will be enough to succeed. Brave volunteers have stepped forward to be put under its influence. Many of the volunteers who interacted with the archetype soon fell to their demise, regrettably. However, those who didn't showed interesting side effects. The archetype has a weird characteristic that can only be described as possession. While under its influence, subjects had their physical appearance undergo certain changes. Some of the subjects reported that their eyes, hair, and sometimes even skin turned to a certain shade of gold. We've tested the removal of the archetype's influence as well. Results were overall positive, but inconsistent. Some had their original physical appearance restored, whereas some kept their alterations. We don't know why the human body reacts this way, but it's something more determined on figuring out. And that's basically it for this bunker. So our next stop is going to be Valor Mountain. So you're going to want to surf out here, dive up to the top. Also, I should mention you want to actually go there from Kokori Village and not just fly to Valor Mountain because that flies you to the peak, obviously.
At Valor Mountain, obviously we want to go through this entrance right here. And we actually want to make our way all the way over here. We want to be using this blue crystal to cool the mountain down. Mainly because if we cool the mountain down, we can make certain dive spots up here. After we cool the mountain down, we want to head all the way down to the bottom floor. So depending on the paths you took earlier in the game, you might have faced Kyogre down here. Which is absolutely crazy. But whether you face Kyogre here or not, you can still die right down here in this spot. And you'll find yourselves here in the Valor Chamber. That's pretty neat. There's nothing over here as far as I know. However, if we head over here to the right, we'll find ourselves back inside of the Labyrinth of Currents. We'll also find the Waterium Z right over here, and that's really neat. It's a shame we can't actually use it. Anyways, we're going to make our way up over here, and we're going to hit the final panel, which will lower the gates. So right here, you want to do a safety save for certain. Neptune is kind of easy compared to this fight, at least in my opinion. Anyway, this is going to be my team, the same as before. No changes to moves, no changes to the Pokemon. And we're going to move ahead and confront this Kingdra. So this is going to be a 6 on 6 battle under the water. Seeking has the Elemental Seed which boosts its speed. It also applies Soak to the user, but that doesn't matter because Seeking is already a water type. Seeking has Waterfall, Mega Horn, Whirlpool, and Soak for moves as well as Swift Swim for an ability. I'm going to hit it with a Giga Drain and hope that I don't get flinched by the oncoming waterfalls. I have had runs of this where the Seeking has flinched Axed my Amoongus to death, basically, and it just was not fun. So that's seeking down. Easy enough. Nice. Next up is going to be Dragalgi. I'm going to send in Klotzer, or Crawdont, sorry. So this Dragalgi has the White Herb for an item, has Thunderbolt, Sludge Bomb, Draco Meteor, and Scald. Also has Adaptability. Something to keep in mind is Dragalgi is a poison dragon type, so underwater, Dragalgi is very, very slow, and it's already a very, very slow Pokemon to begin with. I'm going to be using the dive right here, and I'm going to take us back up to the surface. It's going to go for the Scald. Hopefully it doesn't burn me. Oh, it did. Oh well, it happens, unfortunately. I'll see if I can take it out. Probably not. Either way, it looks like we're going to lose our Cronon. That's fine. I'll send in Aurora Tails. We're going to take out this Dragalgi with Blizzard, and we're also going to freeze the field while we're at it. Next up is going to be Corsola, and I'm going to send out Pukumuku right here. So, this Corsola is Choice Banded. As Head Smash, Waterfall, Earthquake, and Icicle Spear, as well as Hustle for an ability. So I'm going to be switching out Kukumuku into Amoongus right here. And we're going to see this Corsola Earthquake. It's probably Earthquaking because it's potentially its strongest move to use on Kukumuku. Aside from maybe Head Smash. Earthquake also destroys the field. However, there's an issue. Ground-type moves will always fail on the water surface. And Corsola is four times weak to grass, and it's choice locked. So you'll see right here, it's going to try to earthquake me, but it doesn't work. And it will die to the hail. Next up is going to be Klotzer. So I'm going to actually send in Pukumuku here to get Amundus' Regenerator going. Klotzer is holding the Assault Vest. It has Water Pulse, Horse Spear, Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, and it also has Mega Launcher for an ability. So it has massive special defense thanks to that Assault Vest. Also keep in mind that Horse Spear is boosted by Mega Launcher. 
A lot of people tend to forget that because it's not technically a pulse move in English, but I think in Japanese it is. Anyways, I'm going to go for the memento, it's going to go for the dark pulse. This is another scummy moment where I could potentially get axed. Thankfully we didn't. If I was feeling confident, I could actually throw it down a toxic and try to recover stall it. But I'm not feeling confident. So I'm going to memento that and I think I'll spin out a spear tomb. And we're gonna go for the memento again. So that should drop Plotzer's attacking stats by a lot. The hail's going to stop and I'm going to send out Raichu here. And we're going to go ahead and get some nasty plots going as it switches into Polyrath. So, Polyrath here has the Water EMZ, it has Earthquake, Dive, Submission, and Whirlpool. Also has Water Absorb for an ability. So I'm just going to Thunderbolt this. The field is going to boost the attack, plus the Nasty Plot, and this thing is gone. Next up is going to be Kingdra itself. So this Kingdra is holding the Scope Lens, it has Dive, Iron Head, Focus Energy, Outrage, and Damp for an ability. On Intense, it actually does have Sniper though. So what happens here is it has the Scope Lens, it has Focus Energy, if it sets those up together, it has a 100% crit rate. And it hits like a truck. So I'm not sure if I really want to go for the Thunderbolt even though it is boosted on this field. I think I will. And we're just going to see how much damage I can do to Kingdra here. Okay, that's fine. And finally, the Plotzer is going to come back out. I'm going to hit it with a Thunderbolt. I don't know if I can knock out something that's assault vested like this. All right, that works. And after we defeat the Kingdra, we can make our way up here and you'll see all these horsey running around and you can encounter them and catch them. So whether or not you want to catch these things is up to you, but we are at a point in time where we can actually grab Kingdra. So this is all that's pretty much down here, there's nothing else to see or do, but I'm going to show you how we can grab Kingdra in a second. So we're going to be heading all the way off to the Scholar District of Grand Dream City. So I realize you might not know the way out of here and you might be a little bit lost or confused. So for starters, I'm going to show this off. You can't really go back over here. You could go to the left, but the easiest way to get out of here is to go all the way up here and to jump on these currents and just ride them all the way over to the left as far as you can go. Stay on the right side of this little stone portion and then head all the way over here and surface in the Aqua Marine Chamber. Alright, this time I'm really heading off to the Scholar District of Grand Dream City. At the Scholar District of Grand Dream City, we actually want to make our way all the way over here to this building, the Scholar Recreation Center. So if we head back inside here, this is basically the AP shop or the casino of the Scholar District. But it has something that the casino of the Cresselia Hotel back in East Guerin City doesn't have. It has an Axiom. So the only way you could get an Axiom, besides winning this one and purchasing it, would be if you got it as the mystery egg earlier on in the game. Also, actually, most of these Pokemon are completely different than the Pokemon offered in East Guerin. So this is 20,000 coins. And over here at this lady, you can actually buy coins at a rate of 500 for 10,000. So realistically, that Axew is worth 400,000 Poke Dollars. And unfortunately, if you want a King Drum the easier way, then you're going to have to buy that Axew. I'll be right back. Alrighty, that is 20,000 coins, and now we're going to buy the Axew right here. And I actually do want to keep it in my party. 
or I'm going to have to go to the PC. Either way, our next stop is to get that Axew in our party, and we want to head over to the Wispy Path. Here at the Wispy Path, which is easiest to get to if you fly to the tower and just run south, we want to head all the way through this grass down here and into this house over here. There is a girl that desperately wants to see an Axiom. And she loves them so much she just wants to see one. Oh wow, an Axiom. Thanks for bringing that here. And for showing her the Axiom, she'll give us a Dragon Scale. So the Dragon Scale is actually the item that you need to give to Cedra and use a link card on it while it's holding that item in order to evolve it into a Kingdra. So that's why I'm just now showing this off. Anyways, I hope you're not tired of diving yet because we're going to be heading up to Route 11 and diving there. The easiest way to get to Route 11 is simply to dive from the right side of Akua Town and soon enough you'll be here. As you can tell, there is a ton of diving spots beneath us on Route 11, but we actually want to head to a very specific diving spot that's going to be sort of in the upper right area. This dive spot is actually kind of like this giant circle, and we want to dive here first. So once we dive here, you'll notice this submarine. Well, well. Now isn't this a sight to behold? There's no need to be afraid, little one. I'm talking to you through the sh sub's intercom. Can you see me waving behind the glass? No. Too small? Figures. Anyway, it's rare to see trainers dive here on Route 11. You know, it being so cold and all. But I guess it's even rare to see someone down here in a submarine. Regardless, I have a small proposition for you. You see, I'm from the Giran News Headquarters. I'm working on a personal project of sorts. By chance, have you seen any weird tower-like structures around this trench? Well, I actually have, but let's make her explain. There are a few towers scattered about down here. What I've noticed is that they all have a difference in height. Turns out, that is the key to figuring out this whole thing. All of them have a panel installed on them that can be activated. Problem, problem is, well, activating them. I certainly can't do that for my sub, but perhaps you can do it for me. From my research, I've gathered that something may happen if you activate the pillars in the order of tallest to shortest. Could I ask you to do this small favor and activate the towers in that order? Thanks, hon. I appreciate it. Why are you looking at me like that? I'll make it worth your while. I promise. Alright. So you know what? We're going to take her word for it. So for starters, we're going to go ahead and dive back up to the surface, and we're actually going to fly on over to Evergreen Forest. Or the island, rather. So here at the island, we actually want to surf down here and dive straight away into this trench. And if you don't notice, this door is pretty much what we're going to be trying to open. So I actually want to be surfing down along this way, and eventually you'll see this little patch right here. We're going to be surfing right up here, and we can grab the TM for Reflect. That's pretty nifty. So I'm just grabbing these right now, mainly because it's convenient. You could have grabbed these much, much earlier. We surf through that little hole right there and then dive onto the surface from here. We'll find the TM4 light screen. So both are pretty big TMs. Anyways, besides that, we don't need to be down in this area right now at this given moment. So instead, we want to be surfing as far north as we can. And we want to be making our way sort of towards the island, but then down south towards this little diving spot right here. Right here, we're going to surf all the way down here, and we're going to find the first tallest pillar that we need to activate. 
You can only activate these if you have the Igmatic key though. So that's going to be tower number one. And that is the only tower that is out of place. All the rest of the towers are actually going to be down here under this dive spot right over here. So the first tower, the tallest tower, should actually... The second tallest tower should actually be all the way over here. And then the third tallest tower should be all the way over here. And then finally, the fourth tallest tower should be all the way over here. And you'll get the message that it sounds like a door opened somewhere in the trench. So that is our cue to swim north and see what we can find. It looks like this door opened up. You should report this back to the person in the submarine. Alright, unfortunately we have to report to her. So, let's go find her. Back here at the submarine. What was that rumbling before? You've done it, haven't you? I see. So that door by the northern part of the trench opened up. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I'll make my way over the, to that now. You should come too, you know? And she's right. So you know what? We'll meet her over by that door. If we head over to the door from here, we can head on in. And eventually when we reach the stairs, she should catch up. Hey, don't run off without me. Ah, you've done it. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Thank you for helping me out. The name's Jolene. I'm the owner of Gear and News, as well as being the lovely and beautiful mother of the Electrotype leader, Volta and also an honorary member of the Elite Eight. Oh darling, I love that look people give me when I drop that info on them. Look at you, cute as a button. Surprised, are ya? Don't you worry yourself about that all. It's not that important right now. I bet you're wondering where we are right now, yes? I was told by a certain someone that the Spring of Preservation was managed through a secret underground base. Such a base was once controlled and operated by the ancient civilization known as Garufa. Well, they were supposed to be ancient, but this place isn't exactly screaming ancient now, is it? My curiosity was piqued. I couldn't help but investigate further. Looks like my curiosity hasn't been misplaced. Oh, bless your heart. I'm going to investigate further. Don't lag behind now, you hear? She is quite the character. Anyways, quick look over of what my team is looking like right now. I swapped a few members out. I also swapped a move out on Amoongus, so Amoongus no longer has Gastro Acid. Now it has Rage Powder. This is actually really, really helpful for double battles and setting up on things. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and save right here because we're about to encounter what could be a tough battle. Darling, I have a feeling we're not alone all the way down here. Perhaps not by other humans, no. But something created by humans for sure. Speak of the devil. My word! That thing looks like a disfigured magneton. Sugar, I know it's rude of me to do this, but would you mind taking care of this here doohickey? I'm mighty curious about your strength, you see. From the moment I laid my eyes on you, I thought, huh, there's something special about this one. I'd like to see if my hunch was true. They usually are. Now go on, show me what you've got. I must say, that show was mighty impressive. Honey, might I ask? Are you taking part in the Avium League Challenge? 
Ah, so it seems like you are. How many badges have you collected? You've collected way more than ten badges. Sugar, that is a mighty fine achievement, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. If anyone tries to give you a hard time, you just call Miss Jolene, you hear? I'll set him straight. Don't worry about a thing. Bless your heart. I'm sure we'll run into a whole lot more of those so-and-sos, so let's move. So at this point, you might want to bail from here and go heal up. You can just fly to Evergreen Forest and basically this place is so close to there, it doesn't really matter. It's very easy to heal up if you want. Anyways, there's going to be another defense mechanism right here. Alrighty, that is the second battle down. We recommend that you actually save each time you defeat these things. But thankfully, we only have one more battle coming up. I will say this about the mechanisms. They forced me to actually go back and get my clay doll, my crested clay doll, because there's no way I could have gotten through these without it. Yep, there it is. Can you see it? All the way back there. That beam of light, it's what gives the spring its power. But it's a little disappointing, ain't it? The mystical and supernatural vibe it gave off was captivating, only to find out it's powered through some complex system. But now that I know that it's true, that's all I need. So this is really a thing then. Goodness, I don't know how to feel. Oh, Jolene, that's what you get for doubting people. Now you look like a big old fool. Alright. That's all I wanted to confirm, so I guess I'll be heading out. Darlin, why are you looking at me like that? Are you confused or something? Don't you worry yourself over this. I had no intention of actually doing anything here, I assure you. Now that I know this place exists, I feel like I'm obligated to protect it. What if someone just tries to waltz up in here and disrupt the precious beam of light? That just wouldn't do, would it? No, no. If that beam of light is interrupted, I reckon the place would be all dried up and looking sor and sorry looking. The Pokemon that lived there would be without a home. Jolene, Jolene, you need to learn when to stop talking. I'm so sorry, Sugar. I can talk and talk for ages, never getting anywhere. Here's a little something for your troubles. That's just a little something I've been holding on to for a while. I like using Electrotypes, so I wouldn't have any use for something like that. Not that I'm implying you would, but I thought the gesture was nice. I'm off, Sugar. You should come by the Gear News Headquarters sometime and say hello. Until next time, Jolene signing out. That's actually pretty cool, isn't it? The Empoleon Crest will actually double all of Empoleon's stat changes. It's almost like it has simple, although I believe it still keeps its regular torrent ability. But there's something more to this. This is actually the final crest that we could have gotten, except for one. And I think there's someone in Sashila Village that would love to talk to us if we ever gathered all of the crest, isn't there? I'm going to meet you in Sashila Village and we're going to find out what's up. Here in Sashila Village, if you remember, there was a NPC right over here that would judge us to see if we found all the crest. And we have indeed found them. Alright, let's have a look here and see. Oh my, it looks like you've actually done it! Congratulations! Allow me to reward you with some history. Long ago, a king named Iziel ruled over the land of the West. During his reign, a great war broke out between the several large kingdoms in the region. Iziel refused to take part in the war. He thought it would only result 
and the unnecessary deaths of his people. However, one day the queen of the ghost lands, Griselda, walked upon his land and asked for help. Griselda knew of Iziel's history with Garufa magic. She pleaded to Iziel, please help my army become stronger. While hesitant, Iziel agreed if it meant that no war would befall his people. He used ancient forbidden magic to infuse the souls of Pokemon into items known as Crest. He handed them to Griselda and she returned to the kingdom of Gavroa. Unfortunately, neighboring kingdoms heard of Iziel's deal with the queen and demanded that he did the same for them. Iziel did not wish to sacrifice more Pokemon to create the crest the neighboring kingdoms desired, but he had no choice but to do it. All that mattered was that he protected his people. After doing the ritual so many times, Iziel grew weary with guilt. So many Pokemon had lost their lives for the selfishness of humanity. On his last ritual, he lost the will to continue, knowing fully that he could not do it any longer. But dire consequences happened to those who were interrupted or stopped during rituals. Because of this, his soul was merged with that of a Cofagrigus. His castle caved into the ground and created a labyrinth labyrinth that would act as a huge coffin for Iziel to be trapped in for eternity. Many people believe this is the reason why the curse of Zorlin Labyrinth exists. Iziel wants to be free, but the Garufin curse repels people away. Thank you for listening to me. I've wanted to tell that story for so long. As for your real reward, here you go and we will receive the actual last crest in the version 12 game, the Dustmore Crest. This was a crest I found while excavating the labyrinth myself. I've already studied everything I need to about it, so you can have it. The Dustmore Crest increases its attack by about 20%, and it boosts weaker moves, so it's basically kind of like technician. So that's actually pretty neat, because now that we have every single crest possible, there is one more side quest that we can attend to before we actually have to deal with the story again. So for this, I'm going to meet you over at the Hospital of Hope, or just south of it, rather. Alright, so here we are, south of the Hospital of Hope, if you can't tell. And at this bridge, we're going to find quite the interesting scene. There's going to be some Bladestar grunts harassing our old friend Anna. I guess they didn't get the memo that their whole group was pretty much destroyed. Oh, all alone are we? That's a shame. But don't worry, that's how these things usually go, right? Once people get bored of their toys, they just throw them to the side. That's no different for you, right? Your so-called friends got bored of you. No more cool tricks for Little Miss Robot to perform? Well, that's quite alright, dear. Come with us. We won't ever get bored of you. We're family here. I won't go with you all. I see. Is that you? I'm really glad to see you. Oh, jeez. It's this kid again? Don't you know how to mind your own business? Guess we'll have to beat you up until you forget everything about this. That'll teach ya. Oh, really? Here I thought I was going to get a raise for catching Anna. I know. Everything was all copacetic and wonderful. Now we're going to have to worry about the boss firing us. If we get rejected from a place that only accepts rejects, that'll look really bad on our resume. Let's get out of here, gang. That was a close one, I see. Thank you. I shouldn't have come out here by myself. That was really naive of me. Dylan just made me feel really... 
I don't even know how to explain it. I thought I'd be fine, but... I never expected to see Bladestar grunts above ground. So that really got me. They wanted to capture me? Why are they so desperate? I guess you're wondering why I came back? I wanted to visit the Pokemon Hospital again. I wanted to make sure that I actually helped those poor Pokemon. Turns out, I did a really good thing for them. I remedied all their wounds in what seemed like... seconds. Oh, and as for the second reason, I wanted to go talk to Nurse Joy. The one that got all worked up when she saw me activate my drive. What she said concerned me quite a bit, but I'm not so sure talking to her directly is a good idea. So I think I'm going to drop that for now. It kind of feels weird, but I think going back to Dylan's home is the best decision. I hope he's not mad at me for leaving. I'll figure this all out someday, I see. Don't worry. Once all of that is taken care of, we should probably go check out what's happening back at Dylan's house. Since it's been a while since we've actually been on this quest series, I'm going to go ahead and actually show me walking to Dylan's house. If you don't remember, it should be here in the shopping district and it should be right up here inside of this building. That is, if you don't want to take the underground route. So we'll take the elevator and we'll be inside of Dylan's house. It's been a while. And there'll be this package from the Puppet Master. Um, I see. Do you know what this box is? The Puppet Master? What's a Puppet Master? Anyway, it looks like it's for me, but how do they know where I am? Or even who I am? I'm a little scared to open it. What if something bad happens? But, um, I don't think we should just leave it here, right? I thought you said you couldn't stay here, Anna. Huh? Did you guys order something? Order something? Yes, as in, you purchased something and had it delivered to this place. I don't have any money. How could I order something? Anyway, it looks like V is trying all she can to find me. To the point where traveling outside alone isn't safe. I took two steps outside, and I was surrounded almost immediately. I have no choice but to stay here, so... Glad to have you back, then. So, are you guys going to open this or not? Okay, I'm just a little wary of something happening. Nothing's going to happen, and if something did happen, we'd deal with it. I guess I should open it then? Well, what's inside? Um, well, because the box was so big, I thought I was going to get something bigger than this, but... There's a single card inside this box. What? Just a card? What does it say? Here, let's all look... take a look together. Is this a key card of some kind? Dylan, it literally says that on the card itself. Yeah? I was just confirming with myself is all. Anyway, a key must be for the Blakery Anthem in the Scholar District. What's wrong? Is there something else on this key? These images on the corner of the card itself, they're Pokeballs, right? They sure look like them, that's for sure. Why? I don't know. The markings on them really bother me for some reason. They're patterns that seem very familiar to me. Have I seen this somewhere before? There's no use in contemplating about it. 
We'll get more answers by going to the Anthium ourselves. So you said this place is in the Scholar District, right? Yep. It's east of here. We can get there through Axis High Uni, or by the Judicial District Gate. Okay, let's go there now. So they left us, which means we're going to have to catch up to them. I'll meet you all at the Blakery Anthem. Quite a while since we've actually been here, at least as ourselves, seeing as Huey did get us kicked out that one time. Anyways, we want to head upstairs here and we'll find Dylan just chilling by the tables and Anna doing the searching. Hey, I see. Looks like the card key was for the computers up here. Wonder what'll happen when we use it. I see. You're here. I have that card that was in that box. The lady downstairs said it was for the computers here, so... That's why we're up here. Um, how do I use this? There should be a slot next to the monitor. You can slide it there. Is this thing running? Hello? Can you hear me? Not sure why I asked that. If it's a recording. I guess it just sounds better, I suppose. Anyway, hello, Anna, Dylan, and Icy. My name is V. I'm sure you've heard of me, but if you haven't, now you have. You know, I don't really appreciate you all hiding Anna from me. Especially since I technically own her. Or rather, the drive that makes her function. I don't know why the person I ordered it from sent it like this. But I digress. What's mine is mine, and I want it now. No. I need it now. For the sake of everyone. This is what I... Dylan! Why did you turn it off? Because we don't have to listen to her. Didn't you hear what she was saying? She was about to lay down a list of requirements from you. Do you really want to hear that? Do you know what that would do to you? But it's my choice, isn't it? I'm just saying, watching this won't help you. It'll hurt you. Trust me, I've been a victim of these ransom type messages before. They're only made to mess with your psyche, trick you into making the wrong decision. I'm just asking you to trust me on this one. Okay, I trust you. I won't watch any more of this video. Thank you. What now? What do we do from here? Just live your life, Anna. Forget about these worthless people and just do whatever you want. I wish I knew what I wanted. But I'll do my best. Thank you, Dylan and Icy. No problem. I'm still concerned, though. Even if we decide to ignore this video, I don't think V will have the same feelings towards the drive within me. And we'll fight for you when she tries. I don't want you two to keep fighting for me all the time. Hmm. You know what? I got an idea. You two should meet me on Route 9 in about 10 minutes from now. I'll explain more then. An idea? I wonder what's going on through his head. Route 9 is just north of here, isn't it? I'll make my way there now. So, you heard him. We're going to be heading to Route 9. So, probably the easiest way to get there is to just fly to Suta's place and run south. Here on Route 9, you want to head to this area south of the train and talk to Anna. Well, 
here we are again on Route 9. By the water, was it? I wonder what sort of idea Dylan had. wonder if he's up to no good again. Up to no good? That's not very nice. Dylan! Not very nice at all, Anna. Especially since I went out of my way to get you this. Alright. Come out, you rascal. Anna's right here. What is this? Another Pokemon? Yeah, it's a Magnemite. It used to belong to someone I once knew. But they're not around anymore, so... This little guy's been rotting away in my PC for a long time. I think it'll be better off with you. It's weak, but it's up to you to make it stronger. Besides, it knows Thunder Wave. I think that's all you really need to do if someone tries anything weird. Magnemite. You're my first Pokemon. I think I'll call you... Maggie. Anna, if by chance you became a trainer, what kind would you be? There are different types of trainers. Ah, but of course, my child. A plethora of options to choose from, sure. You could be a trainer that manages the, only their favorites. Or maybe a specific type. Perhaps only cute ones. Cooler look looking ones. Maybe even weaker ones. I don't think I really have a preference. I just want something that loves me. Love you? A partner by my side that makes me happy. We could laugh together, play together, even eat together. If they do eat at all, just someone to keep me company. What's so funny? It's just... You reminded me of a time long ago. Where such relationships were possible. I do miss those days. And I miss her, most of all. Her? Ah, but that's nothing to concern yourself with, Anna. Just an old lady remembering her days of old. Covered lost data, 55%. Anna, you doing okay? You blanked out on us again. Or perhaps, did you remember something? 55% of my lost data has now been recovered. I'm over halfway complete again. Oh. But... Thank you for giving me Maggie, Dylan. I appreciate it a lot. Glad I could help out. Just wanted to calm your nerves over this whole thing. Hey, now that I own a Pokemon, that means I'm a Pokemon trainer now, right? Yeah, that's right. Then Dylan, I challenge you to a fight to the death. Uh, what now? That's what two trainers do when their eyes lock onto each other, right? What? No! But that's what I overheard two people saying the other day. The term you're looking for is battle, and there's no way I'd battle you. It wouldn't be fair. I'm experienced. I see his experience too, but maybe they might be a better sparring partner. Okay, then I want to battle you, I see. I want to see what little Maggie here can do. I'm ready. This is how you started, right? Yeah. Now all Icy needs to do is stand opposite of you. 
But before that, could I talk to you for a sec, I see? Listen, I'm not saying you have to, but you should let Anna win. I've seen the way you battled those Bladestar grunts in the underground. I know you're not some rookie wannabe trainer. You know what you're doing, I respect that, but... It's not like I gave Anna a pseudo that's capable of 1v6ing an entire team. I gave her a Magnemite, so... Yeah, if you need to prepare, do so now. Or you could just trash her. Could be a lesson of harsh reality. I won't fault you either way. Is everything okay? Yeah, we're just about done talking. You better be ready, Anna. So the decision is ours to make. And so with that, I think we have multiple options to showcase here. First off, we are going to trash her. Okay, this is my first battle. I hope I do well, at least. Good luck, you two. And remember to have fun. That's most important. Yeah, here I come, I see. So the Magmite, Magnemite is level 25, in case you want to know just what kind of Pokemon you might need to grab in order to give this thing a fighting chance. So again, we're going to completely trash this poor Magnemite. And probably destroy her confidence. Ah. Uh, I see. I didn't expect to win, but Maggie did a lot of work. I'm so proud of you, Maggie. Ah, oh, this sucks. I couldn't beat them. I guess I wouldn't be a good trainer after all. Dylan, what did I do wrong? You just got unlucky. Don't give up, Natalia. You're right. I'll do better next time. Alright. That's enough for today. You both did well. I'm tired and I want to go home. I had a great time today. Thanks, Dylan. I see. Don't mention it. Just look out for yourself. Got it? Got it. I'll be okay now that I have Maggie by my side. So I'll be off, offered to go to Dylan's apartment, but instead I think it's time to show you the other cutscene that could possibly happen if we let her win. Right, so I looked around in my PC and I found the perfect victim for her Magnemite. We are ready for battle! So, as usual, they will say the same old things right now. And again, she will send out Magnemite, or Maggie, as I should say. I picked up this Pablio that we received recently, and it's gonna get destroyed. Thankfully, we don't lose any money to her, because I'm very poor after buying that Axiom. Yeah, we did it! Maggie, we won our first Pokemon battle! Wow, I did it! Dylan, did you see? I beat my first trainer! It's all thanks to the Magnemite you got me! At this rate, I'll be a great trainer just like you. You're doing great, Natalia. What a natural. Alright. That's enough for today. You both did well. I'm tired and I want to go home. So at this point, it is pretty much the same old, same old. And now we're gonna head back to Dylan's apartment. 
Sub. Yeah, sub. I see. Dylan said he'd take us to Pokestar Studios today. Supposedly to watch something called a movie. Do you know what a movie is, Anna? Sounds familiar? Not sure what exactly, though. It's basically a story portrayed through the series of moving images. So it's like you're watching people do things while on TV. Wait, that sounds wrong, especially out of context. I don't get it. Don't worry about it. Well, I, I'll trust you. It sounds fun. I can't wait to go. I have a few things I gotta do first. Why don't you two head there first? Okay, that's fine with me. Where is Pokestar Studios? West of Main Street. You can't miss it. Well, let's head over to Pokestar Studios. I'm so excited. The game will basically shove you all the way back here to Pokestar Studios. But something I should mention is that unless you've taken care of everything at the Ecclesia Pyramid and taken care of the story up to that point, Anna is just going to kind of stand outside here and wait for Pokestar Studios to open and you can't actually continue onwards. However, because we're all up to date on that, we can continue forward. Wow, this place is magnificent. It's so bright and colorful. Let's go explore. So, we'll find her all the way over here. The people here are so nice. Everyone feels so important around here. Everyone has a passion for this stuff. It's different from what I've seen from people before. It's inspiring to me somehow. Oh my gosh! Icy is here to grace us with her presence at Pokestar Studios! What an honor it is to speak to the one and only Team Zen Destroyer. Hmm? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh yeah, I did say I'd show up at the pyramid, didn't I? So, so sorry. I got kind of sidetracked and when I showed up, it was already all done. But let's not harp too much on that. Who's this girl here? Oh, I'm Anna. Who are you? What? You haven't heard of me? My name is Risa Raider. I'm THE pop star of Grand Dream City. I'm also a part-time model and head cheerleader at Axis High University. Oh, um, I'm new to the city. So I don't really know what all of that means. You don't know what it means to be a pop star? Part-time model? A cheerleader? Tell me, sweetie. I'll explain it to you. Yes. Oh, hon. Now that's just sad. I was going to say that you could add actress and director to that list, but I reckon you don't know about those either. Actually, I do. You make those movies, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was offered to direct my very own original film. The original script was about this little girl who was sacrificed against her will by her father and his cult, but... My agent said that's been done before. A tragedy. Oh my gosh, I got the wildest idea. Anna, would you like to have a part in the movie? Me? I don't know how to act. I don't think I could... It's fine, it's fine. You'll only have a small scene. Probably less than five minutes or so. If it's a small role, I guess I could. But I'm not taking off my sunglasses. Hmm? Okay, if you say so. You don't really have to have any specific look, so you can just show up like that. Come with me, my darling. Reese is gonna make you a star. Sure. 
Lisa Reader is pretty awesome, isn't isn't she? Not to mention her theme is a total banger. Anyways, we want to make our way all the way over here, and we'll see them shooting. Sup? I gave Anna a small role, but it'll help her get some experience with... life? But this shoot is for actors and crew only. Gonna have to ask you to leave for a bit. Don't worry, the shoot will take, like, three hours or something. Three hours for a five-minute scene? That's showbiz for you, sweetie. We gotta keep filming until we get it perfectly right. Lights, camera, action! Oi, I see. How's it going? Sorry for being so late. I had a thing to do. Where's Anna and Maggie? We're right here. Hey, Anna. Where, you, where have you been? Well, Maggie and I were casted to be in a movie. Yeah, right. And I'm the champion of the AVM League. What? You're serious? But how? This girl named Risa? She knew Icy, and we all just started talking. Eventually, she offered me a small role, and I accepted. I guess that is how it went. Hold up. Risa? Risa Raider? Icy knows Risa Raider? Listen, bro. Risa Raider is kinda hot. You should put in a good word for me. I don't know about that. Also, I'm kinda broke. Bit cheeky, we cow, eh? Too bad. I ain't paying you 5,000. Maybe. Perhaps. You're such a dork, Dylan. Hey, love is a beautiful thing. Don't knock it till you try it. No, I think I'm good. Hey, Grandma, I heard you say something that I didn't understand the other day. Hmm? What is it, my dear? You were saying how much you loved seeing all the children being wild and happy. Ah, uh, it just means it makes me happy too. When you care about something very much to the point where it means something to you, that's love love. Grandma? Yes, my dear. I love you, Grandma. I love you too, Anna. And I'm sorry. Grandma. Anna, are you okay? You're crying. But, you don't have any... I want to go home. Home? Yeah, okay. We can go back home, if that makes you feel any better. I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. We'll be fine. Let's just get you home. I don't remember ordering a girlfriend. Why are you in my house? Let's not get so crossed. I'm just here to pick up something that belongs to us. Nothing here belongs to you, obviously. It's my house that you ransacked. Now get out before you actually make me angry. Don't play dumb with me, Dylan. Hand over the android. That nano drive is our property. Let's not make this difficult. Again with this? I'm not yours to have. 
And that's not for you to decide, darling. And what if we don't? What are you going to do? Ever since Bladestar went under, he's been lacking in power, hasn't she? You guys got nothing. Just because Bladestar is gone doesn't mean that the grunts have disappeared. We still exist. In fact, I was in Bladestar before. Flora failed me, but V won't. I see. Anna, we're leaving. There's a dock southeast of this apartment. I have a boat down there. Get there. Now. I'll meet you guys in a few. No, you're coming with us too. Damn. Nice one, Anna. No problem. We're leaving together. Let's get out of here. The dock's this way. We can take the route through the sewers out of the city. I'll provide support. You can count on me. You better. I'm shipping your ass away. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> Someone's getting confident. Use that confidence to run fast. Got it? Got it. So, just like he says, we want to make our way down over here. Anyways, inside of this area you'll find a bunch of trainers. They're basically former Bladestar, which I think is really cool. I think even this guy acknowledges that he was former Bladestar. Fortunately, I took care of them all already, so we don't have to deal with them for quite a bit. Let's get out of here, Icy. Here we are. Let's get the fuck out of here. Where are we going? I'm taping, taking you guys to my hometown. It's a little far. The farther the better. Okay, I trust you. That was sure a long trip. Where are we? Crystalline Town. An isolated island off the coast of Terajuma's mainland. This is where I was born. Not from Grand Dream City? Of course I'm not from that hoity-toity city. The only reason I've stayed there for so long was because of... Well, that doesn't matter anymore. Come on in, I'll show you around. Is this your house? Sort of. Through here. Well, this is it. It ain't much, but it's home. There are two beds here. Does someone else live here? Way, way long ago, I used to live here with my grandpa. He used to work in a lighthouse on Route 6. But unfortunately, the building sort of collapsed within Aquamarine Cave. After that, he opened up a fishing contest hall. Pretty popular place it was, until he ruined it. He ruined it? How? The old fool wasn't making the money he wanted, so he took his frustration out on me. I decided I didn't want any of that, so I left. I was the one who kept things orderly. So with me gone, this place fell into nothing. I don't regret it one bit. That asshole deserved it. Where's your grandpa now? Who even knows? It's possible he's no longer in this region anymore. He always said he hated Avium. Terjuma especially. There's no reason for him to stay here. So be it. It's mine now. We can hang here for a while. I'm sort of done with Grand Dream City anyway. Alright, sounds like a plan. I'm gonna go hang around the town and see what's new. Don't cause too much trouble while I'm gone. Uh-huh. 
Like it's Icy and I who would get in trouble. We don't want to have to bail you out of jail, so don't do anything dumb. Absolutely no promises. By the way, Anna, some things aren't free. Ergo, they cost money. Here's 30k. Go nuts. 30k? Is that really alright with you? Huh? It's only 30k. Don't sweat it. But yeah, I'll be back later. That Dylan... He's so nice to me. I'm glad to have both of you around. Well, I think I'll explore the town a bit myself. There's still a lot about this world that I don't know, and I want to learn about it all. Maybe there's some place in town that will be useful for that. So, fair warning, most of this is going to be very, very hard story. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of it coming up. Anyways, if you're wondering where to find her and where she would go exploring, well, of course it would be the museum. So we're going to head on in here, we're going to pay the fare, I mean to get scammed out of our fare, and we're going to find her over here at this Reshiram statue. This thing is a Pokemon? I don't think they could get so big. Maggie, have you ever seen a Pokemon this large before? Hmm, you don't say. What about you, Icy? Have you ever seen a Pokemon this large before? Once or twice. Wow, that's amazing. Please do give me details about that later. It says the Pokemon depicted here is the Bean of Truth, Reshiram. Long ago, two brothers were in conflict with each other. Both had different ideas on how the world should be. As a result, Reshiram presented itself to the brother who followed truth. And Zekram, the statue over there, presented itself to the brother who followed ideals. They fought, but they were evenly matched. As a result, the brothers decided that neither side was right and made peace. I'm glad something so violent ended up in such a peaceful resolution. I guess, in a way, that's why battling exists today. You can understand someone when in the heat of battle. When we fought on Route 9, I could tell that the way you treated Pokemon was something special. I hope one day I can be a trainer just like you, Icy. You can do it. You really think I can? I guess I could if I really put my mind to it. With Maggie, I'm sure that anything is possible. Isn't that right, Maggie? Alright, I learned a lot here today, but I think it's time to head back. But before I do, I want to buy Dylan a present. Just as thanks, you know? I heard there's a place in town that sells lava cookies. I don't know what those are, but the people seem to love it. Maybe Dylan will too. Oh, and I'm sure we know all about that place. So, from the museum, we're going to head back up this bridge, we're going to take a left right over here, and head into this building right here. Excuse me, but do you sell lava cookies? Only the best lava cookies in all of Avium. Would you like to buy some? I'd like to buy ten of them, please. That'll be two thousand. Here you go. Thank you. Say, I don't think I've seen you here before. Are you new here? Mm-hmm. My friend Dylan brought us here to visit for a while. Dylan, you say? You mean the son of the old man who ran the fishing contest? He's back in town? I never thought I'd see the day. How come? Dylan and his grandpa weren't really on good terms. Yelled a lot, fought a lot, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, he did mention something about that. Did he tell you that he left his grandpa with a blind eye? What? 
Yes, it's true. Socked him real good in the left eye. Poor old man's eye almost fell out of the socket. Where is he now? Gone. After that day, he just got his things and left. I see. People thought Dylan went back to his old spot down in Aquamarine Cave, but he never returned. But I suppose that's all in the past now. Nothing to get worked up over. You have a good rest of your day, you hear? Yes, thank you, ma'am. You too. So that was some interesting lore about Dylan. Anyways, we're gonna head back to the fishing contest area. Looks like Dylan isn't back yet. Maybe we should just wait. These lava cookies smell like they were just baked though. I bet they don't taste as good if you leave them out for a while. You know what? There's still time left in the day. Let's go look for him. Could be a way for me to become familiar with the town anyway. It'll be two Pidgeys with one stone, I think. Sounds pretty good to me. So she's going to immediately look around in the town and we can find her right up here, south of the Pokemon Center. I've looked everywhere, but I can't find Dylan. He said he was going to check around the town, but I wouldn't be surprised if he went off and did something else. Wait a minute, didn't that restaurant clerk say something about Dylan having a favorite spot? Somewhere in a place called Aquamarine Cave. Do you happen to know where that is? Oh, I see. It's on Route 6, which is east of Crystalline Town. Looks like we'll have to cross waters from Crystalline to Tully Resort, and then from Tully Resort to Route 6. That should be easy enough. Okay, I know where to go now. I'm going to go and get a head start. So you heard her, we're going to be heading back to the Aquamarine Cave yet again. We've been here so, so many times. I don't think I have to really show this off, but the area you want to head to is the central platform deep inside the cave. Obviously, you have to jump down the hole where Amber fell, and you have to jump all these ledges to get to this ladder, and eventually, if we head on through here, we will find Dylan's secret spot. Pfft. How'd you two know to find me? A little birdie told us about this place. No big deal. A little birdie, huh? Mm-hmm. Don't dance there all smug. I'm sure you just asked around for where I was. Actually, the clerk at the restaurant just told me after I mentioned your name. She told us a lot of things, actually. Like? Hmm. Only that you punched your grandpa in the eye so hard that he went blind. Well, I actually didn't know that happened. Oh. I mean the blind part. I know I socked him in the eye. Damn. Oh well, he asked for it. Well, I'll take your word for it. Hold on a sec, Icy. Wait, wait, wait. What? What's going on? Oh, Icy. You sly dog. Didn't we meet here before? In this cave? Huh? Aw, oh, fuck. Talk about deja vu. We totally did. My memory is so fucking bad. I'm so sorry. I didn't even remember. That's so funny. Wow, you two met here a long time ago then. It's a small world, I guess. <laughs> anyway, why'd you two come here anyway? Oh, that's right. I... we brought you a snack. 
Huh? Some lava cookies from that restaurant I mentioned earlier. I didn't want to wait until they got cold. They were freshly baked. Lava cookies. I haven't had these in such a long time. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Five for you, and five for Icy. Thank you. It's no problem. I thought you might enjoy some of it too. You're not having any, Anna? Oh, no. Nah, I don't need to eat. Sleeping in water is all I need. Oh, yeah. Right. This island is beautiful, you know? The crystal blue waters... The actual blue crystals? Never thought I'd be able to see any of this in my lifetime. Life is full of surprises. It sure is. Dylan, I see. I know I say it a lot, but thank you. Because of you two. I'm so happy. Thank you for getting me out of that toxic city. Everything's such a rush. No one ever wants to slow down. But here, the water's calm. Everything is just chilling out. This is how the world should be. At least some of the time. There are pros and cons to each type of environment. Oh yeah? Like what? It's kind of boring out here sometimes. It's a little too quiet. Not for me. I love this. If I never had to go back to Grand Dream City ever again, I'd be fine with that. You know I can't stay here. Yeah, I know. It's just wishful thinking on my part. <sighs> Visiting this favorite spot of yours will have to do for now. Besides, you're the reason... I'm so happy. Yeah, it was my pleasure. All right, I'm gonna go out for the day again. I'm gonna do some errands. Gotcha, see you later tonight. Yeah, see ya. Hey, when I was on my way to Aquamarine Cave yesterday, I had to go through Tellier Resort. It looks like a cool place to hang out in. How about we check it out for the day? Alright, you heard her. We're gonna be heading back to Tellier Resort. And here we are. This place is such a relaxation paradise. The lady gave me berry juice for free. I can handle liquid, so I went ahead and tried it. It was so sweet and tasty. I loved it. I love the fruity drinks here. Oh, come on. Will no one challenge me? Huh? Is anyone strong enough to challenge the mighty... Oh, no. Anyone at all. Hmm. I challenge... Maybe this is our big break, Maggie. Think we could take him? Hey, Giorno, we accept your challenge. Is that right? That's what I like to hear. Yep, I'll use Maggie. Then it's settled. You shall be my challenger for the Telia Resort cook-off. Yep, and then... Cook-off? Not a Pokemon battle? Of course not. I am Giorno, the cook-off champion for three years straight. Champion? Wait, there seems to be some kind of miscommunication here. I didn't know this was for a... Ah, ah, ah. No takesies backsies. You're already on. Ma'am, please turn around. Huh? There, now we have your picture. You're all registered. 
Good luck, ma'am. Wait, I don't... Come talk to me when you're ready to compete. I'll be waiting. I... I've never cooked anything ever. I see you have to help me. Please tell me you've cooked before. Well... You know what? Let's pretend to be confident. I'm a world-renowned chef. Ooh, really? Then this will be easy with you on my side. You should be my partner and help me through this. I don't know what the prize is for winning, but with you by my side, I know we'll win for sure. Thank goodness you're a world-renowned chef, or we'd be in a lot of trouble. Please tell me that's the truth. Wait, don't tell me. I need to cling on to hope. Yes, hope. I'll believe the lie. I mean the truth. Wait, I don't have eyes. I can't wink. Oops, just pretend I did. We're so screwed. Okay, so I practically begged one of the staff members to help me out with this. They gave me some pretty nice info. There are three judges that will be grading our performance. They all have pretty different tastes, so we've got to be able to wow them with... I don't know. But we have to make an appetizer, a main course, and dessert. What do we do? Let's ask around the resort for ideas, maybe. Maybe we can get a feeling for what the judges may like. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We can do this. Go team! Come speak with me when you're done talking to people. <sighs> Alright, so she's pretty much right. We are very, very, very much screwed. So you don't need to win this competition, thankfully, but there is a way to win it. So anyways, you can ask around and kind of get a feel for what the judges like and dislike. However, when it comes to your options that you have to pick from, the whole it's sweet and spicy kind of doesn't correlate to some sort of Pokemon dish, if you understand what I'm saying. See, this is the type of information that they give you, and it's kind of difficult to correlate to Pokemon taste, so honestly, if you wanted to figure this out on your own, you'd just be better off saving and testing each of them out. Fortunately, I know exactly what to pick if we want to win, so we're gonna win this. Okay, so like I said before, we need to choose an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert. So for our appetizer, we're going to be picking fried octillery. Right, I'll write that down. What about the main course? And we're going to be picking I papaya cheddar parm. Alright, got it. And finally, what do we want to do for dessert? Petcha berry sundae. Alright, got it. Hopefully this works. Let's go check in with Giorgio now. So we'll find him over here and we're ready to cook. Bring it on! Welcome one, welcome all to the Telia Resort Cook-Off. Today we have a special event for all of you. On my left we have the famous, the gorgeous, the Telia Resort Cook-Off champion, Giorgio. Thank you, I love you all. And on my right we have a tag team of newcomers straight from who knows where, Icy and Anna. I just want to have you know that I technically could live here. Hello, we'll do our best. Before we begin, I will state the rules. This competition will be divided into three rounds. The objective is simple. Score more points than your opponent by the end of the third round. If it ends in a tie, the audience will decide. Sounds fair? I'm actually okay with these rules. I can deal with this. Yes, darling, it's very simple. Right then. Let's begin round one. 
the appetizer. On your mark, get set, cook. And that's it. Time's up. Thank you, contestants, for working hard and cooking an appetizer for our judges. Let's start off with our champion, Giorno. What do the judges have to say about your crabby and cheese dip dish? Simply divine. The cheese and crabby mixture was amazing. Four out of five. A four out of five is amazing. Not surprising. What about you, Joy? I will say that the cheese was expertly melted, but... I'm surprised to find that the imitation crabby meat was a little cold on the inside. 3 out of 5. A record low for DiGiorno. Wow. Still, a 3 out of 5 is pretty good. Personally, I would have gone for a salad. I have to keep this figure if I want to keep dancing magnificently. 2 out of 5. Ouch! Scratch that. This is a new record low for DiGiorno. This is gonna hurt his score. And for the first round, DiGiorno has scored a 10 out of 15. Not bad. The score was a little low for my standards, but that's still record high for the resort. So you know what? Now let's see what the judges have to say about Icy and Anna's dish. Which is, by the way, the fried imitation octillery. Absolutely divine! The fried octillery was fried to absolute perfection. It's not too oily. The salt amount is just right and the dip complements the meal very well. Five out of five. Wow! A perfect score. What does Joy have to say? I have to say, I expected this to be too salty, but you guys did an excellent job with that. It was savory, and like the chef said, the dips were perfect. Five out of five. Wow! Another perfect score. What does Rorum B have to say? Hmm. It was good. Much better than that crabby and cheese dip DiGiorno served earlier. I could eat this without gaining too much weight. Three out of five. And that settles it. I see an Anna scored at 13 out of 15. Wow, we nailed the first round, I see. That's it for round one. Let's move on. Right, let's begin round two, the main dish. On your mark, get set, cook. And that's it. Time's up. Let's see what the judges have to say about the main course this time. Giorno cooked a magnificent dish of seafood rigatoni. What does the chef have to say about this? This dish was absolutely bursting with flavor and texture. Perfection, five out of five. A perfect score for Giorno. As expected. What about you, Miss Joy? Splendid. I enjoyed every bite. I want more. More. Five out of five. Another perfect score for Giorno. Finally, what does Warm B think? It was absolutely mesmerizing. It was a little thick, though. That hampered my enjoyment. Four out of five. Wowie. Giorno is rocking an almost perfect score. 14 out of 15. Beat that, kiddies. 
And what do the judges have to say about Icy and Anna's dish? I papaya cheddar parm. Chef, you're up first. What can I say? I'm very much blown away by this dish. The berry choice was absolutely perfect, the cheese was amazing, and the overall flavor and texture was to die for. Five out of five. Wow, a perfect score. Amazing. What about you, Joy? Chef really said it best. I must agree with everything he said. Absolutely incredible. Five out of five. Incredible. Two perfect scores for the newbies. Are they prodigies or something? Roar on B. I am at a loss for words. Nothing has tasted so divine in my life. I am moved. I am so, so moved. Five out of five. I can't believe it. A perfect round for Icy and Anna. What? Icy, you did it. We're amazing. I can't believe it. Right. Let's begin round three. Dessert. On your mark. Get set. Cook. And that's it. Time's up. For the final time, let's see what the judges had to say about our champion. For dessert, our champion has prepared a wonderful creme brulee. Chef, you know what to do. The creme brulee was just delicious. What a way to end off the competition. Everything was made to perfection. You can really taste the love put into this dish. Five out of five. Starting off strong here. A perfect score for our champion. Joy, what do you think? Absolutely scrumptious. Creme brulee is one of my favorite desserts. I wonder if he knew about that. Five out of five. Amazing. A second perfect score. Maybe Giorno has this in the bag. I loved it too. I don't care for sweet things that much, so... 4 out of 5. Wowie! Giorno at it again with a 14 out of 15. That's gonna be a hard score to beat. What do the judges have to say about Icy and Anna's dish? Petcha Berry Sunday. Chef, you're up first. The perfect dish for a dessert. Perfectly sweet and creamy, delicious. I liked it better than Giorgio's dish. Five out of five. A perfect score. Amazing. Again, Chef and I usually have the same opinions. This time it's no different. Stunning. Five out of five. Wow. Amazing. Another perfect score for Icy and Anna. Finally, Aura. You know, I don't care too much for sweet things, but the Sunday was perfectly sweet. It wasn't overwhelming. Five out of five. This brings Icy and Anna's score to a perfect 15 out of 15. We did it! We smashed this round! This is it, folks. The results are in. Combining all three scores, Giorgio ends up with a whopping 38 out of 50. Combining all the scores, Icy and Anna, they've racked up a whopping 43. Icy and Anna win. We won? I can't believe it! We won the cook-off! This can't be happening. My career! My win streak! No! I present you two with a trophy to commemorate your win. I see. We did it! We're champions! Congratulations on winning! There's also a secondary prize for winning, did you know? No, I didn't. What is it? We'll develop a new ice cream dish with a name you decide. Really? Hmm, what should we name it? 
How about... Very Close Win? I feel a little cheeky coming up with that name. It's decided then. Very Close Win will be our flavor of the year. Thank you so much. Let's go back home, Icy. I want to show Dylan the trophy we won. Alright. She's right. Let's go back to Crystalline Town and see what Dylan has to say about this. Dylan, where are you? Icy and I just had the most incredible day. You wouldn't believe it. Huh? He's still not home. Ah, I understand. I bet he's at his favorite place again. Kinda... out of the way. But I guess we could check on him. Not even here? Where could he be? The game just hit us with that to be continued, which means we finished the Anna side quest as much as we possibly can for this given time, for this given version. And you know what? We did a lot. So, I'm going to end it here. Also, I just want to apologize really quickly. My voice was a little bit... my throat is just a little bit sore, and I might not have sounded okay at certain points. But I just want to say thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, hope it helps, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.